Maybe you've heard the saying, build tight and ventilate right. But I think what we should be saying is ventilate right, then build tight. Because what we need to concentrate on is building for good air quality indoors, then we can afford to go after the energy savings from building tight. So how do you do that? How do you ventilate right? We're gonna talk about first the kinds of things you need to use ventilation for and then how to do some basic, basic ventilation. We have lots of pollutants in our houses. CO2, particulates, formaldehyde, VOCs, and water vapor. Australian Building Codes Board says a family of four could produce from seven to 22 kilograms of water vapor per day. Hold up, wait a minute. What's that? This right here is 20 kilograms of water. That's a lot. Every single day, a lot of water that you need to get rid of in your house. So how do we do that? There's two ways of doing ventilation. You need extraction and dilution. So extraction is something where for a particular event, like you're boiling a pot of water or you're taking a shower, you use the ventilation to get rid of those pollutants, the water vapor, you try to get rid of that as quickly as possible. But you also, after you take a shower, your towel's wet, your shower is wet, there's water on the floor maybe. That water takes a lot longer to get rid of. It takes a lot of time to dry and that water has to be diluted as well. That water vapor shows up. So you need not just extraction, but you need dilution long term. So constant ventilation is just as important as instant or intermittent ventilation. So short term ventilation and long term ventilation. So continuous ventilation really doesn't have to be that scary. Yes, it's true. Heat recovery ventilators with distributed ducting to every living space and filtered intake air and heat recovery to make sure the incoming air is just as warm and comfortable as the outgoing air. That's better, absolutely. But it's more expensive. So just to get some of that benefit from extraction and dilution, you can use a pretty simple fan type to do that for any kind of construction. Okay, so you don't want just any old fan. You don't want an axial fan that you can't put a damper on, uh, that you can't duct to the outside. These are required by building code. Ducting to the outside to get rid of that those pollutants, really get them to the outside, and a damper to close it. When the fan is off, you don't want it to be leaking air indoors and out. So a, a good quality fan, this, this type of fan is a centrifugal fan. It's got a, a motor that runs very efficiently. It's very quiet, high performance fan made for continuous ventilation for its whole life. So this is really high quality. It also has some basic things for making both intermittent and continuous ventilation. Right on the fan itself, it has a dial so you can set a background ventilation rate for continuous ventilation. You could use this to meet standards for constant ventilation. It's very simple, very low energy way to, to ventilate constantly. Then when you come in to turn on the switch in the bathroom, it goes to boost mode and goes to 100% capacity. So it can do both continuous and intermittent ventilation. That's why something like this does a lot of good for diluting some of the pollutants that gather over time, but also helps you get rid of the pollutants that gather more quickly, like a shower. So ventilating right doesn't have to be that difficult for construction, no matter how airtight you build.